worship him, glorify him, magnify him with all of our hearts, all of our soul, everything on the inside. Just give him thanks this morning. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Father God, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be assembled in your house this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the richness of your presence, of your spirit, and of your power. We thank you, Father God, for the ultimate sacrifice upon Calvary so that we can live a life that's free of sin and newness of life. We thank you, Father God, for dominion, that we are seated in heavenly places, that we have victory over every work of the enemy, and we ask you, Lord, move in this service by your power and your spirit. Have your way this morning. Give us hearts, Father God, to yield to you. We ask you, Lord, to save this morning. We ask you, Lord, to do works of deliverance. We ask you, Father God, to do works of healing this morning. And we ask you, Father God, every territorial spirit that hinders the move of your spirit and power, we ask you, Lord, to tear down this morning in the realm of the spirit and let the power of God move in us. Let us be vessels set on fire for the glory of God to see something happen for you in our generation. We ask you, Lord, to touch our praise, touch our worship, touch our pastor, Lord, as he preaches the word of God this morning and give us hearts, Father God, to receive of your word, receive of your power. Fill us with hearts that desire a divine encounter with you this morning. And we ask you, Lord, to have your way in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. How many ready to have church this morning? Amen. We're going to have a good time in the house of the Lord. Jesus is in the building this morning. Let's have a good time in the Lord. Page 404. Sing it for 
from your heart this morning. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. No other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. No other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus. Let's sing that chorus two more times. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You know other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. One more time. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. No other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Worship the Lord this morning. I'm telling you, how many really want to have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ this morning? Amen. You know, I think about those words of Elisha. He said, Where's the God of Elisha? Amen. In so many words, it's not enough to see Elijah's God. I want to see God myself. We want to see God do a great thing this morning. He's going to do great things in our hearts and our lives. Turn to page 481. We're going to sing that song. No, not one. Let's continue to worship this morning in the presence of God. Just give him thanks right now. Just tell him how thankful you are for your life. How thankful you are that he woke you up this morning. How thankful you are for family, for health, for strength, for all of these things. We don't want to take nothing for granted before the Lord. But thank God for everything. The food and the uh, pantry, all of these things. God has taken care of us, protected us from diseases unknown. All of these things. He's worthy of all our praise this morning. Page 481, there's not a friend. No, not one. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could kill all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No friend like him is so high and holy. No, not one. No, not one. And yet no friend is so weak and lowly. No, about our struggles he will guide till the day is done there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus no not one no not one there's not an eye that he is not near us no not one no not one no night so dark but his love can cheer us no not About our struggles, he will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Did ever say find his friend forsaken? No, not one. No, not one. Or sin a fight that he could not take him. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Was ever gift like the Savior given. No, not one. No, not one. Will he refuse us a moment heaven? No, not one. Jesus, Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, one more time. 
morning. I'm telling you, saints of God, pray this morning. You know what Paul said? He said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. And I want to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. He said, in every state, I want to know the Lord. And you think about that scripture where Jesus said these words. He said, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name or that in your name? And he said, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I know you're not. I'm telling you the highest prayer you can pray this morning is to know God and know the heart of Almighty God this morning. Worship him this morning and connect with Jesus. Amen. We didn't just come here for another church service this morning, but we came here for a divine moving and working of the Spirit of Almighty God. God wants to flood this place this morning with his glory and with his power, but we have to be receptacles to receive the power of Almighty God. You know what? Purpose in your mind, I'm getting all that God has for me this morning. If you don't have salvation, get salvation this morning. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, come to the faith zone and get the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning. If you're dealing with sickness in your body, I'm telling you, come and get a healing this morning. God will heal you this morning. He said, come to the elders of the church. They shall pray for the sick and the sick shall recover. We still believe it and we have a God that can do it. In Jesus' wonderful name, let's have a good time in church this morning and let's meet with the king of kings and the lord of lords you can worship him as long as you like and after that you may be seated amen we serve a good god this morning amen we come in this house there's so much power available you know it's like having a mac computer but if you use it as a as a door stopper you're not getting its purposes we want to get all of the purposes and power of god working in our lives and working in our hearts amen we serve a good god this morning amen amen god is good we want to remind you about our other activities tonight we're going to uh, have service tonight 6 p.m online and then we're going to have tuesday bible study get in the bible study and really be a student of the word of god and not only be in bible study be in your bible every day Reading the word of God, getting a hold of God, praying and seeking the face of almighty God, as we said, to know him in a greater way. Amen. They're going to prepare to. Which, amen. Easter service will be coming up. I think that's April the 17th. And so be in preparation for that. But you know what? Search your heart before the Lord and say, you know what? What can I do in this generation to advance the kingdom of God, to really see God? touch and move in this city i really believe we have a gospel and we have a jesus that's meant to affect territories for the glory of almighty god you think about philip the evangelist in the word of god the bible said he went preaching casting out devils healing the sick and the bible said there was great joy in that city and i'm telling you there can be great joy in our city in this neighborhood on 334 asher street that people come bum rushing the doors to see a move of almighty god it's not that it could be it's that it will be and god is looking for some men and women to step in agreement and step in alignment with him to absolutely see it done for the glory of almighty god to take up our dominion position and absolutely dislodge and cast out the works of darkness and undo the work of the enemy god is a good god this morning amen at this time we're going to take up our offering as unto the lord and we'll pray uh, for the offering this morning. Father God, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give you a portion of that which you've given to us. We ask you right now to uh, bless both the gift and the giver. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can also give, text to give 347-229-9933. Again, that's 347-229-9933. And then you can go on our webpage, myntcc dot org forward slash brooklyn new york my ntcc dot org forward slash brooklyn new york thanks in advance for your giving
know our God is a great God this morning, amen? He's a great and awesome God. You know, let me sing it this morning. How great is our God? Well, how great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? No, we see how great. Is our God Age to age He stands And time is filled In His hand Beginning and the end Beginning and the end He's got our three God had three In one The lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb. He's a great and mighty God this morning. Come on, have a singing this morning. Uh, how great is our God? As they come up to prepare, sing with me. How great. Amen. We thank you for your giving this morning. May the Lord truly bless us. Our prayer. Amen. As Reverend mentioned again, our Easter service, but also on the 13th, on the 13th of, of March. March, that's in two weeks, I believe it is. We don't have our double Sunday. Double Sunday, does that means two weeks. You got two weeks to prepare to bring some folks with you. Amen. We want to double up our service. We want to double up. Again, the tennis. Uh, we have a regional promotion to where... Again, we want to see double back, get double back to what the enemy has taken from us, amen? To get double back what the enemy has taken and stolen, amen? And, and the price that he has to pay, again, how it was in the Old Testament, they had to pay twice as much. And so we want to get the enemy back. How many want to get the enemy back for what he's stolen from you? Amen. And so on the 13th, let's come back and believe in God for a double blessing, double portion, double miracles, amen? And on the 13th of March, bring somebody with you, amen? That's we, we want to double up, again, in attendance and and all the moving of God in a mighty way. Amen. God bless you, ladies. It's our prayer.
as you call deeper still as you call deeper still as God this morning. This time we're going to dismiss as well for the children's church. Amen. It's unto the Lord. And uh, they are dismissed to go back in the back. She's going to do another one here. It's called He Can Do All Things But Fail This Morning. Amen. Amen. We're thankful to God for who a God is that He is. And He's perfect in all of His ways. As, as the songwriters say, he's, He can't fail. Amen. He cannot fail and He does all things well, brothers and sisters, this morning. So let's continue to trust God. Believe God, amen, that he cannot fail. If y'all know this song, if y'all know this song, come on and sing it with us, amen, or with her. She's going to lead this thing. And so uh, 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 we give God thanks for what he is doing this morning. Amen. God bless you.
Give him praise like you mean it this morning. Give him praise and glory and honor for he is due, church, this morning. Amen. He can do all things but fail. If you can bring me mine for me, please. Amen. It's still plugged in. We give God thanks for his goodness. We give God thanks for his love. This morning, he's never lost a battle, brothers and sisters. This morning, he's never lost it and he never will. When you take it to the Lord in prayer, uh, this old song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. And one of the lyrics, parts of the verses, it says, oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry and take it to the Lord and pray. Amen. And when we take it to the Lord, our God up in heaven, he's more than able, thank you, he's more than able to see you through every single moment of your life. We're excited, church. Amen. We're excited. It's a beautiful day. The Lord has made another opportunity to come and worship God here on this wonderful Sunday morning, first day of the week, amen, the best day of the week to get your week started off right and to come and hear the word of God. Amen. I want to come out of the book of Acts this morning. The, the book of Acts, some call it the, the uh, a part of the gospel. Again, it's an extension of it. It's an extension and a history of the early church. And uh, it's an exciting book. You get a chance to go back and read it. Uh, again, uh, work it into your devotional time to read the book of Acts. You'll find so much action in it. I call it the book of action. Again today, uh, how the, uh, when God sprung into action and the church sprung into action, again, to go back and, and win souls for Christ, to win, again, in life, to give men victory. And that's what Jesus came to do, is to give us victory this morning. And so I want to read to you out of chapter 9, verses 1 through 6 this morning. 9, 1 through 6. The Bible says in Saul... Yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. And he desired of him letters to Damascus, to the, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, he says, whether they would, were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. He's referring to being a Christian. They found any that was going to be a Christian, he wanted to, to uh, persecute them and lock them up. And many of them even died. The Bible says in verse 3, he says, As he a journey, he came near to Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell down to the earth. And the Bible says in a voice, he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He says, and he said, Who art thou, O thou Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. He says, Why persecutest thou me? I am Jesus, thou persecutors. He said, I have heard uh, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. He says, he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And, and the Lord said unto him, arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou mightest or may, must do. What thou must do. I'm going to reread that in verses 4 again. Uh, verse 4, he says, and he fell to the earth 
and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? In other words, this is Jesus. Probably in your Bible it may be read as the words of Christ. And it says, why are you fighting against me? It is hard. In verse 5 it says, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And then over in the book of Romans chapter 8, chapter 8, 35 through 39, it should give, become familiar to you by now. And the Bible says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distresses, shall persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Romans 8, 37. And he says, we're kind of sheep for the slaughter. Nay, but in all things we are more than conquerors, he says, through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And today we want to come back with these two passages, a little bit more also. Part three, part three of complete victory, amen, over, and this part here is part three about persecution. Complete victory over persecution. This uh, a theme we've been running with for the year 2022 is about complete victory. And we want to talk about it in all aspects of your life. Amen. How many want to see that? Amen. Having victory in all aspects of your life. And so we've been running through a bunch of these, but there's so many more to come as well. So we're going to ask Reverend Johnson to open us in prayer, please, today. Amen. to his heart. We ask you, Lord, to give us hearts, Father God, that's a fertile launching place for your word this morning. And we ask you, Lord, to let our hearts be mixed with faith to act upon the word of God this morning and put it into action in our lives. Let us not just be hearers of the word this morning, but let us be stirred to action to take up our place and take up our part in your kingdom to advance it for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Complete victory. We've been saying this again. We want to we want to win in 2022. Amen. Breakthrough in 2022. As we've been talking about as a church, as a believers in God, as Christians. Again, and so you can have complete victory in your life. God intends for the church to be victorious. God intends for us to win, no doubt. And, 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 and there are many things that we have to win over. That's where we know that we have victory over the devil. Let me know this morning. As a believer in Christ, and, and he gave us victory over sin, and he gives us victory over death eternally. And we see all these different things that a believer has victory over through the liberation of Christ Jesus. And, and so, but along the life's way, now that you're a Christian, now that you're a believer, there will be things that come your way. I mean, say amen to that today. And so we've been dealing with complete victory. There are so many aspects in our life that we want to uh, deal with. And uh, again, big things, little things. God, help me get the victory over all these things in my life because I want to be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. And so this one here, I, I told you about the year 17, the year 17 we're in. And, and, and there were 17 things that just happened to happen to work out this way. There were 17 things that the apostle Paul had listed. And I just read to you in Romans chapter eight. And, and now we're up to number three. We're up to number three about uh, persecution. If you think about what persecution is, persecution is, um, I'll give you a definition of it. It's oppression. Oppression is one, one way to define it. Victimization is another way to define it. Uh, maltreatment or ill treatment, mistreatment, abuse, ill usage, criminalization, uh, tyranny, punishment, torture. A lot of these things go on with the word uh, persecution. Harassment is another one. Harassment or hounding or, or harrying or badgering, teasing bullying, and even they listed molestation. And so we see these things can persecute the mind. It can persecute the church. It persecutes people every single day. Amen. Things will harm you. Things will come at you. The enemy's not happy that you're here this morning. Did you know that? 
He's not happy. And so why, again, as you go throughout your life, you will find that, again, that's part of life. As a part of, again, Christianity, part of everyone's life is, is where the enemy will constantly fight you and constantly come at you. And, and again, and so you have to come up in your mind, just like it says here, bullying is one of the things of persecution. You have to make up in your mind, enough is enough. Amen. Amen. Enough Preach. is enough. Amen. Amen. I'm going to win in my life. I'm not going to settle for this. I'm not going to let the enemy win. I'm going to see a change in my life. There's going to be a transformation that takes place. I'm tired of letting the devil win in my life. It's time to come over to the winning side this morning. Amen. And so we see persecution. The Bible tells us he roams to and fro. The enemy talks about this. Uh, roaming about seeking whom he may devour. We're talking about the devil. He roams about seeking well, who, whose house he can torture. Whose house he can persecute. Whose mind he can get into and harm and hurt. A again on and on and on. You ever seen a house out. Again, whether it's uh, activity or whatever the case may be, the devil's going to always try to stick his little nosy head up in there. He? He's going to always try to stick his way in and try to mess up something to cause uh, a confusion, a disagreement, and on and on and on. And so his job, he, he, he does his job well, as we oftentimes say. I mean, you can say that. The devil does his job. And so it's up to the believer, and no doubt, for us to do our job. And even God does his job. But it's our job, no doubt, to follow after Christ, to follow the one who, who gives victory over the enemy, and, and, and as a result, so you can win in your life. Uh, the Bible talks about persecution. It's listed tons of times in various forms about per persecuted or persecution. The Bible says one of the causes of it is, he says, the wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. He said the wicked in his pride, and that was really the fall of Satan himself, his pride uh, again wanted to uh, exalt himself in the heavens as we read about. He wanted to exalt himself even above God. And so he could not do that. He could not win. And so what does he do? He comes after God's greatest creation, which is mankind. Did you know that today? You are made in, in, in the image of God, wonderfully and fearfully made. He said, but let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. And so it's Psalms 10 too. The Bible says, and so he, he conjures up to persecute. He conjures up to oppress. He conjures up to seek whom he may devour. But you say in your mind, not today, devil. Not today, not going for him. I will have victory over this persecution. We pray, no doubt, even for those people uh, again over in Ukraine. And, uh, we have several Ukraine friends and even some Russian friends that we are uh, co-workers of ours. We pray for that country and we pray for that situation because we see persecution again here today comes in many forms and fashions whether it's a grand war as we see or are some of the smallest of things on, on the lower level that we all can go through. Amen. But we begin to see for the Christian believer that you should not give in to that thing. Amen. Don't give in to it. But you should dig in and say, you know what, I'm going to get stronger and better. I'm not going to let this stay and get the best of me this morning. Again, so we mentioned how the devil hates the church. He hates the believers of Christ. And I'll take you back to our Bible story here in Acts chapter 9. There was a man named Saul. A man named Saul. S-U-A-L. Saul. And he was, his job, again, he was a Pharisee and his job was to persecute the church. His job was to, uh, again, his, his, it was his government uh, mandate for him to go out from house to house, from church to church, from gathering to gathering, and persecute the church. Whether it was to put them in jail, whether it was to kill them or, or destroy them or discourage them from following after Jesus. Again, we see the goodness of Christ. We see the moving of God. We saw how good that God is. And so in order to get that to stop, the enemy raised up people to do what? To stop the moving of God. You may notice that in your life, again, when you're trying to do what's right, the enemy will raise up his head. I may know what I'm talking about. The enemy will raise up his head. I'm trying to I do what's right, I, I'm a, especially for a brand new Christian. Amen. Get ready for the battles that come your way. Get re older Christians as well. Get ready for the things that come our way. And so the Bible says that Saul was breathing threatenings in verse 1. He was breathing threatenings to slaughter uh, and slaughter against the disciples, and, uh, which went into the high priest. And he desired, no doubt, letters, and he, he, he had gotten permission to persecute the church. The Bible says whether it was men or women, he didn't care. The devil doesn't care who you are this morning. He does not care who you are, what you may be, or where you may be from. He despises mankind. The Bible says that he journeyed to this place called Damascus. And suddenly, the Bible says the, the, the light began to shine upon him. In verse 4, 
the, the light began to shine on him and he fell to the ground. The Bible says, uh, no doubt, and a voice from heaven said, Saul, Saul, he says, why persecutest thou me? Why are you fighting against me, Saul? This is Jesus speaking from heaven. Jesus had already gone back to heaven. And now he was speaking from heaven. You ever heard, again, let God speak to your heart this morning. Let the Lord speak to your heart. He's saying, why are you living this way? Why do you want to continue in this way? You're only hurting yourself. You can't, no, we can't fight against God. Don't even try to fight against God's will. God has a divine purpose for your life. Did you know that this morning? God has a divine purpose for your life and your heart and your soul for your family. Don't fight against it, but to totally surrender to Almighty God. He says, why are you fighting against me, Saul? He said, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. It's hard. You fight a losing battle. And you know what? In, 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 in our world today, and in your heart this morning, you say, you know what, devil? You fight a losing battle. You can't have me, church. Amen. You tell the devil, he can't have me. You tell him, church, this morning, you cannot have me. You tell the Satan, he cannot win. How many going to say that with us this morning? Devil, you have been defeated. I, I, I'm a servant of the living God. I trust in the word of God. I'm going to live for Christ the rest of the days of my life. And you cannot have the victory in my life. He said, here, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. The way of sin is hard as well. How many know what I'm talking about? The way of sin is hard. And no doubt we see how the men and women, they, they are again fighting against the will of God. The enemy tries to say that sin is better, but it's not this morning. And so he went on and says he was trembling in astonishment. He's laid there on the ground. And he asked this question. He says, Lord, what will you have me to do? What will you have me to do. He says, rise and go to this city. Today, church, are we willing to say, you know what, God, I'm willing to do whatever it takes for the kingdom of God. I'm willing, God. He was willing to give his life for us. He was willing to die for us. He was willing to shed his blood for us. And he realizes at that moment, he says, you know what, let me be willing to do for you this morning. Brothers and sisters, if we think about what Christ did for us, the, the sacrifice that he paid, we should be willing, no doubt, to do whatever it takes for the kingdom of God. We find again this whole, uh, again, this, this thing, persecution, he was a persecutor. And so as he began to have this transformation, the renewing of the mind and his heart and his soul, he went from being a persecutor to now the persecuted. Amen. Can you imagine this? He went from that being a persecutor to the persecuted. Church, today we think about this in your life. It's best to be uh, again doing the things for God. Amen. The Bible says here today, uh, Peter said one time, he said, I'd rather obey God than men. I'd rather obey the things of God and do be caught doing the will of God. He said, if you're going to get locked up, get locked up for serving Jesus. Amen. There won't be, you, we, it's hard for us sometimes to imagine this in our minds. Again, what it's like to be persecuted. It's what it's like as a, Christ, as a church to be persecuted here in the United States. But it still goes on in our world today. But even on the smallest scale, as we mentioned before, the enemy will pick at you and pick at you and pick at you in other facets of your life as well. He would do this, but you have to make up in your mind. I don't care what he does. I will win in my life. You can throw everything at me, devil, but you cannot win this morning. Amen. You cannot win because you have a made up mind. You have a made up mind of where you say it is the same man who wrote Romans chapter 8 is the same man that once persecuted. He says, you know, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I'm now a conqueror. I'm now a child of Almighty God. And it does not matter what comes my way. I will serve him and live for him all the days of my life. He would now have to stand before the king. As the story fast forwards to chapter 26 of Acts, the Bible says now he stood before the king. He went on for several years and preached the gospel. He went on and preached the gospel to the lost. He went on and, 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 and told people about the risen Savior. You know, that's really the will of God in your life, is to tell somebody about Jesus, to live for Christ, to overcome, again in the day, uh, what the world may dictate, but to tell others about Jesus. That's really the answer, as we mentioned the other day. The Bible goes on and says he, and he was standing before the king, Agrippa, and in chapter 26, you can look at it with us. In verse 16, he, he, he said uh, he was giving his testimony before the king. The king was saying, why are you living this way? Why don't you know I can let you go? Don't you know I can release you? You're causing havoc in the city. And I like that part in the book of Acts. You go back and read it. They begin to wreak havoc in the city. They begin to turn the world, the Bible says, upside down as, the, as the, uh, those that were observing saw it. 
They saw again why? Because the moving of God was that powerful. How many want to see that today? Amen. The moving of God was so strong that the, the enemy said they're turning the world upside down. Why was he saying it? Because the drunkard stopped drinking. Amen. The drunkard stopped drinking. The gangs stopped, became uh, 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 null and void for many of them. Uh, the prostitutes became uh, in Christians. And, and on and on and on, there were people that were being converted. That's the power of God this morning. Listen to him. Amen. And the devil does not want to see people saved. The devil does not want to see people delivered. And that's why he fights so hard. No doubt he fights men and women. That's why he fights your family so hard. He fights you so hard. He fights us so hard. Why? Because, again, he does not want to see people uh, converted to Christianity today, but church today it still can't stop the church. Let me know that this morning. It still can't stop it this morning, and you make up in your mind, say, you know what? I refuse to let the enemy have the best of my life. And so they turn the word upside down. They say, wait a minute, this, this husband and wife used to fight all the time, but now they ain't fighting no more. <laughs> it wasn't upside down, but it was right side up. Are you listening? It wasn't upside down as they, they thought that he was doing it. They thought the church was turning the world upside down, making havoc. No, they were making things right. Jesus can make things right in your life. Jesus can make your life and make it whole. Today we are incomplete without Christ. We're broken without Christ. Our world is broken with Christ. Can I get a witness this morning? Our world is messed up without Jesus. It's time to make things right and come to God this morning. He makes all things well and right this morning. And so they were turning the world right side up. Marriages were being broken. The sick had been healed. As Reverend mentioned this morning, the sick can be healed. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. You can and will be. Amen. Amen. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. You can be blessed beyond measure. You can have victory in your life. Your world can change in a moment. I'm talking about a living God, complete victory, amen. And regardless of what the enemy may do, they cannot win. The devil cannot win because we serve a victorious living God. And the Bible says he so he stood before the king. Let me get back to this, chapter 26. The Bible says he stood before the king. He says, arise, stand on your feet. And so Paul, who was, as he had a name change as well, his name is no longer Saul, but it was now Paul. You see, God will change your name from sinner to saint. I mean, say that. He'll change your name from broken to, to uh, again, made whole. He can change your name from lost to found this morning. God can change your life from victim to victor this morning. God is able to change your life this morning. His name was chained to Paul. And the Bible says, arise, Paul. He, and he says, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister Again, and so he began to give him his testimony in chapter 26. He was re repeating what Jesus had said to him. He says, I stand before you and, and I'm telling you that Jesus had called me when he spoke to me that day on the road to Damascus. He says, I want to make you a minister and a witness for both things that thou hast seen and the things which do appear unto thee. He says, my purpose and my plan that God had changed my life was now no longer to be a persecutor, but to be a, 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 the persecutor. Again, and so he was now no longer lost but he was now able to be saved in your life today your purpose your plan it changes for the kingdom of God this morning your life you thought was headed this way but God is going to transform it and turns it around to a different purpose and a different plan perhaps I'm talking to a preacher this morning you don't even know you're a preacher yet amen perhaps you may know you're a preacher but you're just not willing to answer the call yet but God can call you God can perhaps you're a preacher's wife we don't know what God is trying to do in your life but God knows and God can touch your heart and your mind and soul to go and do something in the ministry, amen. It's not always, even always preaching and preaching why, but you can be, you can sing, amen. You can rejoice, you can teach, you can, you can do something, you can be a soul winner today, be a part of the ministry. He says, God saved me to be a part, to be a part of the winning side, to go out and, and re, uh, again, to go into the devil's kingdom. I may say that this morning, to where the devil persecuted me all my life. Can I get a witness this morning? He's been persecuting you perhaps all your life. He tried to destroy your life. He tried to kill you and tried to steal, kill and destroy is what the Bible said. He said, but oh, Jesus came to give us life and that more abundance. So now, the apostle Paul was flipping that thing around he says now I once served the devil but now I'm going to serve God with all my might I'm serving the Lord Jesus Christ with all my strength and with all my, my zeal and my joy and my heart and my mind it all belongs to Jesus now in church of the day I wish to God that you would begin to flip it around and stop being the persecuted but begin to become a persecutor for the kingdom of God how's that amen I had it written down but become a persecutor you become a threat to the devil's kingdom 
when you go back home, amen, they say, hey, wait a minute, something's different about this girl. Amen, why? Because you are now a threat to the kingdom of God. You are now a threat for the kingdom of God. You are now a threat against the devil's kingdom, amen. The devil's trying to destroy my family, trying to destroy my brothers and my sister, my nieces, my nephews today, and God wants to use you to reach back in and say, hey, wait a minute, come on out of that mess, come out of it today. And that's what the apostle happened to the apostle Paul. There was a conversion to where he was able to now flip it around and try to say, you know what, I'm going to reach somebody for the kingdom of God. Amen. The Bible says, he said, he called me to deliver the, the people from, and from the Gentiles whom I stand before. He says, my eyes have been opened and we pray that their eyes will be opened as well. That verse 18, he says, their eyes, 26, 18, he says, their eyes be opened and turned from the darkness to light. To turn from darkness to light. We want the light to persecute darkness. Let me say that. And the, the gospel and every believer to begin to bring light to a dark world, to bring light into a dark situation. He said, from the power of Satan is what he said. The Apostle Paul said, God changed my life so I can see people change from the power of Satan. Don't you know Satan has power? We all were once a part of that. And if you're a part of underneath the influence of Satan today, we pray that God will break that thing this morning. God will break that power of Satan upon your life. There's a greater power and that's the God of heaven this morning. There's a greater force. There's a greater mighty moving of God that can take place through the blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. To where now you become a threat to the devil's kingdom. How many want to do that today? Say, I want to now be used again for the kingdom of God. The Bible goes on and says, he says, to deliver the people from the grips of Satan, the power of Satan, that they may receive forgiveness of sin. And what, that's one of the hardest things that persecutes people is their past and their sin. It will persecute your mind. It will persecute you, the things that perhaps we've all done. There are times that get flashbacks in my head and I say, my God, I beat on the table sometimes. I say, man, I can't believe I used to do that. Mm -hmm. I, when I went back home the other day and I, I saw someone, again, they, they happened to be at the funeral. And I was like, Ugh. the girl's like, what's wrong there? I said, man, you just don't know who I used to be. And you know what? Again, it'll beat you up. Thank God for forgiveness. Thank God for deliverance. Thank God for the things in which we were delivered from. And thank God again. And so you say, you know what? God is a forgiver of sin. Amen. God is a forgiver of things. Not to, it's just part of growing up and all these different things. But you think about it. It might have ever happened to you before. Where something just hits you over here and say, my God. But that was the devil that was trying to get us uh, in that lifestyle. That was the devil that was trying to, again, cause us to destroy our soul and other people's souls along the way. That was the devil trying to begin to uh, allow us to, uh, again, be used by him. But you know, in your mind, you say, you know, I want to be, no doubt, usable by God. So he says that people may re receive forgiveness of their sins. Thank God for forgiveness. And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. Again, they thought, they thought that as Paul stood before, he stood before the man who could release him. He's over here telling them about Jesus. He's over here telling him about Jesus. The Bible says they thought he had lost his mind. Listen to what he says. He, he, out of the, this man named Festus said, Paul, Paul, you have lost your mind. That's what he thought he said. You have lost your mind, Paul. What's wrong with you? And many times when you come to Christ, people will think you lose your mind because now you're different. The things, the things that used to affect you don't affect you anymore. They think believers done lost their mind. How can you pray to a God that you can't see? How can you believe in a God, amen, that again in the day allows all this stuff to happen, amen, but again in the day, it's not about that, amen. I know it's real. He's real and real as we sit here today. And they may think, why are you making these changes in your life? Why are you giving to the church? Why are you spending so much time in prayer? People think something's wrong with us, amen. Why? Because you trust in the living God. And they said, a pastor said to him, he said, Paul, you become mad. All this reading and all this studying and all this word of God stuff, all this Jesus stuff, of them made you mad. <laughs> and he says in verse 24, let's read it. He says, oh, uh, and he thus says, spake unto Festus. He says with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. And he says in verse 25, he says, I am not mad. In other words, I'm not crazy. He said, most notable Festus, but speak the words forth of truth and soberness. He said, I'm not even drunk. He said, I'm just excited about Jesus. Amen. Amen. He said, I'm not crazy. He said, I'm crazy. I'm crazy about Jesus. How's that? 
If I'm crazy, call me crazy for Jesus. If you call me fanatic, call me a fan of Jesus. Why? Because again, what he's done for me and what he can do for you today. In church of the day, he was saying, no, and you don't realize who I was. I was lost, but now I'm fine. I was on my way to hell, but Jesus came and delivered me. And so now I want to get back at my enemy. I want to get back at the one that tried to destroy me today. I just want to do what God wants me to do. He said, if I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for uh, the things which was not done in the corner. He says these things as he began to speak it to the king and to those that were listening. He said these things is what the world needs. This is what our society needs. Our society is being persecuted by the devil but again the liberator Jesus Christ today is able to deliver through the gospel of Jesus Christ today and the Bible says he said to the king and king responded back to him. He said believest thou the prophets? He, asked, he even asked the king, he said, do you believe what I'm telling you? Do you believe what I'm saying? Do you believe what the prophets have to say? And the king Agrippa said unto him, Paul, thou almost, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. He said, Paul, I was just as close. I'm almost persuaded, my friend, they don't be almost persuaded. Don't be almost persuaded, but get all the way in this morning. I don't know about you, but I, I'm fully persuaded that the enemy was trying to destroy me. I'm fully persuaded this morning that hell is real. I'm fully persuaded that heaven is real. And I'm fully persuaded that our God up in heaven can do us so much better. Let me say that this morning. I am fully persuaded that he is the Christ. I'm fully persuaded that you're doing the right thing. I'm fully persuaded, no doubt, that we serve a victorious living for living God. I'm fully persuaded today that no thing, back to my first text, in, uh, second text in Romans, he says, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come, distresses, tribulations, and nor persecution. I am fully persuaded that I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I'm persuaded this morning that God can see you through this morning. I'm persuaded if you serve a living God, you can overcome through Christ Jesus this morning. And regardless of what you go through, trust God through it all. This man was about to die, but he didn't care. He didn't care because he knew how good God was. He didn't care. He trusted God. And they made, uh, the enemy may think, Make you think, he says, there's something is wrong with this man for believing this. He only know we can release him right now. But he didn't care because he knew the God that he served. He knew the God that he trusted in was able to deliver. He knew the God that he served, was, he was doing the right thing now. He was fully persuaded in his mind. And church, when persecution comes your way, when things come your way, when things begin to try to get you to doubt God, don't doubt God, but trust God. Trust God through it all. Through it all. When it um, comes in like a flood, again, it will bombard your minds with things. Realize that I'm going to trust in the living God to see me through. And through persecution, he said, who can be able to withstand these things? Who, uh, who, can, who can overtake you in these things? He says, none of these things. None of these things should be able to move you. And so whatever the devil may throw your way, don't let it dissuade you from serving God. Rather, it's temptation. Don't let it dissuade you. Whether it's a block in the way, a world block in the way, don't let it stop you from calling on God. Don't let it stop you from serving God because, again, he is the greatest one of them all. Come on up, please. And so we see through oppression and victimization, get the victory over these things. Get the victory over these things, uh, 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 harassment, uh, uh, bullying. And the devil's the biggest bully of them all. But he cannot win this morning. He cannot win. And so we see again in our hearts and our souls, we will win through Christ Jesus. And so he became not only, not the persecuted, but he was a persecutor against the enemy now. In terms of that, let's wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness, amen. Let's take the light of the gospel. The devil's trying to destroy many of you, all of us really. But you know what, let's take and trust in the living God. The Bible says we are more than conquerors. He said all these different things in Romans 8, 37. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So the greatest of persecution that may come, the greatest of battles may come, but you know what you can win in Christ Jesus this morning. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever battles you're facing, as you bow your heads in reverence to God, bow your heads in reverence to God. This man was changed. He changed his thought pattern. His heart was changed. His life was changed. His eternal destination was changed. Because he trusted in Jesus. And all of the great things he was saw after that. Because he joined himself with Christ. He left the losing. He left the darkness. 
And he came into the marvelous light of Christ Jesus. My friend today, leave the devil's camp this morning. Leave the devil's camp and come over to Jesus. Stop letting the devil win in your life and come to Jesus. So you know what, enough is enough. Saul, is there a Saul out there today? Let Christ change you and use you in a mighty way. You've used his hands long enough, devil. You used my feet long enough. You used my mind long enough. Now I'm going to flip it around and start using these hands for Jesus. Lord, take my hands, my feet, my mind, my soul for the kingdom of God to let me become a soldier in the army of the living God, to be a conqueror over the battles of things of the past, things that no doubt attack my mind, whatever it may be that the enemy throws my way. Let me block it out by the grace of God and by the, the armor of God. I can block these things out and become a conqueror for Christ. Today, my friend, we encourage you to win. Win over the mind battles, the things that bombard you, the things that attack you. There will be attacks in your life, attacks on your soul, attacks on your finances, attacks on your health. There will be things that will come at you. But trust in God. Trust in God. Even in the chains that the enemy try to bind you up in, trust God through it. Apostle Paul trusted God even in chains. He still continued to preach God's word. That delivering power from on high. What do you need deliverance from this morning? With the altar prayers open. What if you have a need of this morning? Jesus is here to set you free. To become a conqueror for the kingdom. A conqueror for Almighty God. It's time to make a change in your life. Say, God, I'm ready to make this change. This conversion. It's no longer losing. I'm tired of losing, preacher. I'm tired of being broken. I'm tired. Today, make the times today. Today's your day. To become that Paul. On your road to Damascus, God has spoken to your heart. He's already dealt with your heart. He's already spoken and says, time to make the change. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of losing? Today, come to Jesus. As we look to the Lord in prayer this morning, she began to say, it's unto the Lord. Call on that mighty name of Jesus this morning. Call on him this morning. Let him have his way in your life. Whatever the need is, our God is here to supply and meet every need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. Today when, brothers and sisters, this morning, battles will come.
get persecuted, amen. Let us go out and do something for the kingdom of God. I'd like to welcome my brother, amen, to the family of God, amen. Gave dedicated his life to the Lord, amen. Welcome aboard, welcome to the team. Our king back there, we thank God for him. Amen, amen. Come on board and serve God. God has built up a mighty army. Amen. It's going to be able to change and do great things in the lives of many women. One more soul, amen, for the kingdom of God. To join the forces, amen, against the enemy. Say, I'm tired of the devil fighting in me. Amen. He's going to continue to fight, but you fight back now. You have the power to fight back. You have the power and the supernatural power. Beyond the natural, beyond swords and shields, we have something greater. Through the power of prayer, through the power of his word. Amen. And that's why it was so mighty, the movement of God. And during that time and even our lifetime today, it's still the same God that's able to do it. Amen. As we begin to look to God, so we become, again, on the aggressive church today. Let's go wreak some havoc in the devil's kingdom. Invite somebody, tell somebody. Amen. And fight back. How do I fight the enemy back? You begin to say, in the name of Jesus, flee. You speak the name of Jesus. Amen. You speak the name of Jesus. When it kicks in your mind, say, devil, get out of here. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. He'll try to persecute you in your mind back to what we're talking about, persecution. It's always physical persecution, but it's things that attack, things that go on in your life. Begin to pray over the battles, the struggles, or whatever the case may be in your life. There will, be, there will be things that come your way. But God will equip you through the power of prayer, through the power of his word, to win. Amen. I'm going to go win with us. Amen. Amen. Go out and win in Almighty God. Be mindful again next week. Uh, throughout the week, our services, tune in online and, and in person. Uh, this Thursday night, we'll be back in person and then uh, next weekend as well. So come on out. And then the 13th, the 13th, the 13th. It's our double Sunday. So start working on it now. Start working on your family and friends so we can have twice, twice, and twice, to twice, to twice. I, wanna, I don't even want to limit it to twice, but we want to see uh, double back. And what is that? What was it back again? Those of you who joined us late, it was uh, uh, in our region, we having a, a, a promotion where, uh, again, in the Old Testament, when they, when they lost something or they stole something, they had to pay twice as much in return. They had to pay twice as much. And so we say that many times the enemy has tried to steal from us. He's trying to steal from the church. He's trying to steal from all the churches, really, going on in our world, this pandemic and all these different things are stolen from us. And so let's get back. Let's get back twice as much. And so bring somebody with you. Amen. Each one reach one. Let's fill the house of the Lord up. Again, going forward, we're going to spring into some great things in the spring year of 2022. Breakthrough. Amen. For you and I. God bless you. I pray. We'll see you uh, later in the week. Amen. And God bless you. I pray. Remember, just missing prayer.